Part of the reason that people like Andrew Tate are so attractive to young guys is because they do put up that confident, that false confidence. It's, Tate's a complicated guy because it's not all false, you know? Real people are complicated the way that like villains in, in comic books aren't. Tate's a fighter. It's clearly the case that he's got a certain degree of physical bravery. That's real, all right? There's an element of what he says that's very attractive to bed, bedroom basement dwelling losers because he's at least there out in the world, you know, taking the blows and he's got a fast car and he's flashy and he's attractive to women. But a lot of what he's done, especially with women, doesn't just border into the psychopathic, it crosses the line. And I'm not particularly, what would you say, impressed by what he's done on the sex business front. It, it seems to me a bit on the pimpy side, let's say. And I'm not a great admirer of pimps. <laughs> so, wait, even if they're the electronic version. Uh, and so, that's not a good model. It's not an optimal model for people who are trying to progress. But it's a strange thing, because just as cynicism is an improvement over naivety, right, the capacity to be dark is an improvement over the lack of ability to be dark at all. And so Tate is attractive in the way that the shadow beckons to people who are undeveloped, right? Because it does, it's like you're, you're neurotic and you're dependent and you're repressed because you're immature and harmless. Well, one way out of that is to stop being harmless. And one of the things you can say about Tate is that he's not harmless. Right, well, that's, that's a, it's a virtue. Now, it's a virtue that has to be bracketed. It's like cynicism is a virtue compared to naivety, but it's not, it's not virtuous in and of itself. It's a step on the way.